Yo, first in the chat, Speaker Freak 2 How's it going, my friend? Did you guys, did you get a uh, email notification for this one? Because um, a few, a few of the recent streams, the, um, the email notifications haven't been working. So give me a shout. Let me know. Did you get an email notification for this or a push notification on your phone? Show me the Hondas. How's it going, buddy? How's it going, man? Awesome, so the email notifications are working. That's good. Good stuff. What's going on, Cantrell? What's going on? It's been a little while since I streamed. Uh, last week, I think it was. Been a little while. Been a very busy weekend for myself. Carolus, how's it going? Eric Zeta, how's it going? What's up, Corey? What's up, buddy? What's up, yo? Popped up on the iPad. Awesome. So the push notifications are working. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. Exactly what I wanted to hear. Because, uh, yeah, these YouTube push notifications can be a bit sketchy. And they like to not work sometimes. How's everyone's weekend been going? Any further news on the banda, says Chris. Uh, the banda, um, yeah, the, the boards that I had put to one side, the spare boards, basically I've, I've, with, with, the, with the, um, the board that, that was yours, um, that has got, um, that has got, a, a, it's leaking between pads, so the, uh, the actual PCB itself has become conductive um, in between the driver pads of the uh, 2010S chip. So what I've had to do is um, I've been rebuilding basically the donor boards that I've had uh, for the banders. Um, a lot of them are stripped back quite far. So I'm having to order brand new parts for all of those and wait for them all to arrive like rail caps and even RCA ports and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm testing out, I've got two spare boards. I'm going to test out uh, w whether both of them uh, don't have any of that leaking between pads, which obviously they shouldn't do. Um, and whichever one, whichever one appears to be more stable, so I'm building them both back up with the intention that I check them out, I, I repair and fit all new parts to both of them, and the one that, that seems the most stable, the one that seems to be acting the most like normal and the, and the healthiest, then I will obviously put back together fully and, and, you, and that one's your one. Uh, and then I will keep the, the one that's dead as a spare, for spare parts. So it's just, it's taking a long time because I'm uh, basically having to rebuild the boards up from scratch. Uh, so I've ordered lots of parts for them and um, obviously I've got lots of other shit in the meantime that's like, you know, that, that, that people need back, like some work for the amp doctor that he needs back. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, don't worry buddy, we're, we're working on it. We'll get there. And I, I didn't want to rush you, I want to make sure that I give you the best board out of the two. So yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Nico says hello, how's it going? How's it going? Hope everybody had a good weekend. I uh, I, I spent most of the weekend in bed actually. Not feeling too well. <laughs> Not feeling too well. Hence why I've got my hood up because I'm still not quite hundred percent. Kind of hiding. I want to. I want to live stream, but I'm kind of hiding from the world still. You know, I've got some work to do. So, Okay, I shall go over what the hell is going on with this amplifier that I'm currently working on in a brief moment. Uh, just uh, just getting started uh, with the, the, these rail caps are, are very dead, so we're going to get rid of these bad boys. So has anybody ever ran or ever owned an amplifier by SSL? Or the, the, anything in the Evo line that I'm currently working on? Uh, what's your opinions on these? So this cap, this cap, the, the top here is quite, is, is kind of bulged and when I run my finger over it, there's, a, there's like a, a, a lump, um, so it feels like it's kind of expanded inside a bit. I wonder whether that's still at, oh, actually, <laughs> when you shake it, when you shake it, it's all come apart inside. 
So I don't know about you, but when um, I mean caps, I've never felt a cap do that before, where you shake it and you can feel all the insides going blah 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 inside. So that's uh, that's not a good sign. So that now that can go. I'm really hungry actually, I literally just sat down and I've just just got really hungry, that's annoying. Hmm. What did I eat this morning? Not not much, not much. So it's Mother's Day here. Uh what's everyone doing on Mother's Day? People spending some time with their parents or uh, or their loved ones if they're um, obviously if their partner is a mother to their children what, what are you guys up to family times obviously I'm in the workshop <laughs> I've got some stuff planned later on this evening dude I saw your mixer are you going to play music no I'm not gonna play music because um, when I play music on the live streams Although it's great fun, people, some people like it when I play music. A lot of people actually watch my videos whilst they're at work and um, the way that they can get around that is because it's viewed as being educational, like, so uh, they can watch my live stream whilst they're at work, and it, but if I play music then that screws it up for them because then it doesn't look like, it looks like they're slacking off and just listening to music rather than actually, you know, watching something to gain some knowledge. So um, I don't tend to do music on the live stream as much anymore. Hi from Sweden. Hi Jerry. How's it going, my friend? How's it going from from? Uh, so you, you did you know Lawrence Vasterson? If you're from Sweden. Hi from sunny Crete. Oh, I love Crete. I love Crete. Been there many times on holidays. Is it sunny at the moment? Because uh, I heard that it can get pretty cold in the winter time actually over in Crete. Well, where did I stay? I stayed in Elunda for, for, for quite a bit. I heard you guys sometimes have snow in the winter, is that true? In Crete? Jerry says, yes, I knew him. Awesome. He's a lovely guy. Very genuine, real guy. I have a lot of respect for, I have a lot of respect for Lawrence. How's it going, Nid Frost? Good to see you on the chat. Good to see you guys on the chat. It's starting to pick up now. Uh, ah, yeah, Heraklion, no snow. Okay, cool. I liked visiting Ios Nikola. Oh, what is it? What's it called? Ios Nikolaos Agnik? I like visiting there on the evenings. It's, it's good fun there. It, what it was, this was like maybe five years ago. I haven't been for so many. I don't know, is it still good? I don't know. I haven't been there for, for many years, quite a long time ago. What's up Santiago, what's up buddy? Man, I am hungry. Literally, the second I sat down here in the workshop, my stomach is going crazy. I might have to sort that out in a moment. So what we're doing at the moment is we are removing all of these. Uh, the, so this SSL amplifier, this, this is this has got some bullshit going on. There. We're, we're removing all of the main rail caps um, because they have uh, most certainly vented. So you can see here. Uh, so th this is one of the main rail caps, uh, and the um, the actual uh, insulator cover here. I don't know if it'll focus, but it's actually wet. It's it's got all the electrolytes have, have burst out. There we go. The, the the light shows it up better there. So the electrolytes have burst out of that. And it's all wet and the top of the cap is bulged and vented so these caps are no good and they're also all very wobbly we're, we're, like you, you can feel there sh it shakes inside he's working on a lot of the new build now to be finished before the Easter show yeah I see him posting up lots of build pictures he's going crazy uh, I see all the um, all the Winston uh, lithium cells he's got looks pretty cool I'll send you a cheeseburger <laughs> that would be wicked uh, yeah I could do with a cheeseburger I might, I might just have to go and get some crisps or some chips as you guys call it. You guys call them chips. Uh, we call them crisps. Hi 
how much cost these caps? Um, these ones actually came with the amplifier. So this amplifier that I'm currently working on has been sent to me by another repair centre in the UK. Um, because uh, the, the the guy who sent it is going is is trying to venture more into the uh, re R and D research and design for amplifiers rather than repairs. So he's got too much repair work to do. So um, oh, anyone with a subwoofer probably just heard that large bang. Then that was pretty cool. Um, but anyway, so yeah, he's sending me some, a lot of it, a lot of the work that he's got laying around. Um, so he actually bought these caps already. So I don't know. I can't. I don't know what exactly these cost. But these caps generally cost anywhere from uh, a pound to two pounds each which is maybe like a, a dollar fifty to three dollars each depending where you get them from perhaps it really depends where you get them from and, and what value they are and such so 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 we're gonna get started so we have removed this this amplifier this is the SSL the Evo 5000 I don't rate these boards these are, these are pretty pretty basic cheap ass China boards um, now this one came in like I say from every, another repair tech um, it's passed me, passed me some work to do because he's a bit too busy. I'm also crazy busy, but you know what the hell. Uh, so this one came in, and um, the first thing I noticed was uh, we have vented caps on the uh, output side here. So, uh, where are we? Up here. These caps have all vented, uh, and now these caps are uh, across the the speaker outputs. Um, and they will probably be to do to, to smooth the, the rails and to be they're there after the um, uh, what do you call it? They're after the inductors. Um, so they probably vented because the amplifier most certainly uh, lost one side of, of outputs, uh, which caused the other side to drive full DC, which then blew the caps, which weren't expecting that. Um, and that's also perhaps what killed the. The rail caps here, because you, you can, uh, if there's an issue with amplifier, one side dies, um, then you can have a, a flyback power supply effect from the inductors, and that 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 flyback effect uh, can raise the rail voltage high enough that it blows all the rail caps, and that's that could have killed. That's could have been what killed all, all of these actually. These these caps over here and the main rail caps could have been all killed due to the fact that the rail voltage swung way higher than it was ever intended due to a flyback effect uh, from the output section dying. Representing Jamaica says Prince. What's up, my friend? I love Jamaica. I've not visited yet, but um, I have I've quite a few. I had quite a few good Jamaican friends over here. Uh, fucking wicked guys. Wicked guys. Uh, don't don't speak about lithiums. I want them so bad. Says Nick Frost. Yeah, you see the the thing with lithiums is right. So the the lithium capacity is massive. It's huge capacity, right? And it also has a a good discharge rate. Okay. The only thing that I've heard that's not so great about the lithiums is that uh, their recharge rate is very slow. Um, I can't speak from experience because I've not run lithiums in my own vehicle yet, but this is what I've heard, that lithiums aren't necessarily the be-all and end-all for car audio. Um, lithiums in conjunction with supercaps, perhaps, yes. Lithiums in conjunction with supercaps would probably be a good shout. Uh, I'm not sure if lithium just purely by themselves are are the be-all and end-all for car audio systems. I just got some TW1500 SPL for 100 bucks mint condition. Time to go flex from Canada. Awesome, man. Go flex that shit. The weight is so much lower. Yeah, the, yeah, that is true. The weight of the lithiums is much lower, um, which is obviously a, a, you know, an attraction to those. You think about putting a bunch of headway, uh, thirty-eight, twelve, zero life pro four, life pro four bats in parallel and series, capable of hundred amps per battery and only around sixteen dollars a piece. I think that you probably need so many of those to actually for it actually to be worth it that it would be extremely expensive way so yeah they're only six so they're sixteen dollars each but once you have <laughs> once you obtain enough of them uh, to to put together something that represents the sort of capacity of a car battery it's probably going to be quite an expensive adventure for you actually are those ones that I've got I've got I've got a, a I've got some some bullshit uh, fucking let's see what I've got over here I've got some Bullshit attempt. Some 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 guy over here in the UK put together this. Uh, actually, this is the same. I think this is the the, the same cells. Uh, what did you say? Thirty eight, 
120. Yeah, that, that's these ones. That's these bad boys here. 38 120s. Um, I've got to be very careful with this. Because it's, it's not charged, it's very uncharged. So someone put this together, okay, in the UK and was trying to flog them and sell them as lithium batteries. And oh my flipping god, the build quality was horrific. Um, literally the case was just all falling to pieces. Um, and so you know, he sent me one to test out to, to see whether I wanted to or was interested in them. And I saw the, the quality of his work, like he got fucking all this foam crap. Um, and the, the connections were terrible. Um, yeah. Uh, Anyone in the UK who might know these as the Stark Bombs, we, we, we nicknamed, nicknamed them the Stark Bombs. Uh, the guy who, who was putting them together was called Mr. Stark, and we thought they would all explode, so we called them the Stark Bombs. And uh, lo and behold, the guy is actually now in prison for other reasons. So, obviously not a very t trustworthy guy to, to, to go ahead with in business. Um, but yeah, this is essentially what you'd be doing if you were putting together a load of 38 120s uh, in serious parallel, which is what he's done here with a balancing board. Uh, it doesn't work very well though. I, uh, I haven't had good results with it, uh, but yeah. Uh, let's get these blowing caps out of here and then we can start looking at um, what's going on with this amplifier. See whether it'll be an easy repair or not. I hope it'll be an easy repair. This one needs to be finished by Wednesday. So it needs to be finished and it needs to be back with uh, Gordon uh, by Wednesday. So I've got to pull my socks up with this one. But hopefully, she need, hopefully she doesn't need any new replacement parts that I've got to order in because that would that would be annoying. Eighteen six fifty wouldn't be great in terms of capacitance. Have you checked double SSM channel? I have not. I have not checked out that channel. What's that channel about, buddy? Let me know. I'm always interested in, in checking out uh, channels. But I, I'm not going to lie. I don't. I don't watch a great. I don't have a huge amount of time. Um, to like you know to sit down and, and watch like a, a load of videos this this is the problem I'm, I'm I'm incredibly busy so I'm always I'm always creating content but I don't generally watch a great deal of content because um, any spare time that I have there's usually much more important things I need to be doing <sighs> okay. so that's those four caps out and uh, next thing we need to do then is take off all of these uh, output FETs. So this amplifier, look by the looks of it, is using is it using N channel and P channel? Let's have a look. So we've got two sides, high and a low side, obviously. And we have 31 N twenty Ds in that side and 31 N twenty Ds. Okay, so it's single ended. So we haven't got N channel and P channel. We've got just N channel. And channel FETs. Okay, and now these boards. Now you see this board. This is obviously a class D, uh, but it's a very old school, shitty class D. It's a very old, like, way of, of working class D. Um, and all the drive transistors are all these uh, TO92 parts in here. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got the uh, the OP amps for generation, etc. It's all it's all old school fucking bullshit. You haven't got any nice uh, service mount components. Not got any um, half bridge uh, driver ICs in in SMD format. None of that. It's a very old school way of uh, of making a class D amplifier. And these are very fussy with the parts that you use. Uh, I, I experienced this with an old Soundstream. I think it was a Soundstream Tarantula T. 2000 TA 2000 or something I did a long time ago um, and we tried upgrading the FETs on the output section, section to something a bit better and it was not happy it, they just all heated up and the only way to get the thing to, to play happy was to replace them with the original spec parts so here we have in my bag uh, now these parts came from the amp doctor he already purchased them and included them with the amplifier for repair these are 31 N20Ds so before we actually go uh, fitting these Let's go, before we go like fitting these, I'm gonna just pop them all into my transistor tester because I wanna make sure that 
these were obtained from a reputable source and that they have a nice low uh, RDS which is the same throughout the board uh, across across the range across all of these you need the same RDS mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, I think this uh, I think um, this may be damaged I think this may be damaged come on where's pin one pin one doesn't seem to be making con con a connection to the uh, the board here pin one Ah, oh, it is. It is making a connection. Okay. So why why are you not why are you not showing up as a FET, my friend? Why are you not showing up as a FET? Hmm. That's uh, strange. So all of these are just showing up as a diode. Um, I wonder whether this little unit isn't um, sending a high enough uh, signal to the gate to, to, to for this thing to turn on fully. Uh, VTT is not high enough. I've never had that before actually. I've never had this test done. fail to, to read a, a MOSFET before. Interesting. Hmm. I know this thing is cheap as hell, but it's been very reliable. Um, okay, so they're all, they're all coming up as diodes. Interesting. I'm gonna try putting them on the on the surface mount little section here. I'm just gonna bend that leg out. So you got a little surface mount pad here. I'm just gonna try and touch it, touch the legs on this, on these pads, just to see whether it's the, uh, the other bit that's the issue. That nah, still coming up as diodes. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Here we go. Here's another 31N20D that I have salvaged that is working from a, an old amplifier. So this is, you know, if 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 it can't read the 31N20Ds, then it shouldn't be able to read this one either. Yeah, interesting. It can't read that one either. Very interesting. So has my tester just died, or or is it just that it can't read these? So let's get a, let's get a, a brand new thirty two oh five. I know it can read thirty two oh fives. The common power supply fit. Oh man, I'm hungry. And it reads the thirty two oh five just fine. So hmm, I wonder whether the specifications for the thirty one and twenty D are actually just a little bit. To, uh, to outside of whatever this tester is capable of reading. Fair enough, no worries. Well, these are brand new, so we're just gonna have to roll with it and trust them, trust that they work. Uh, so, we need one, two, three, four, five, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We need 12 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 12. We have exactly the number that we need, which means there's no room for error. There's no margin for error here. We can't. We can't miss anything and it, and it blow up uh, <laughs> because that means I won't get it done by Wednesday, which is the deadline for this amplifier. So let's remove all of these old ones here. I'm going to remove them using the uh, soldering iron so that I preserve the legs uh, in case anything does go wrong and we do blow any of these up. At least then we can make a bank out of any that survived from the board. Uh, no, the, the battery in the test is pretty new. Uh, it's a pretty new battery in the tester. You can see where, 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 when I click when I go to click test, it shows up the battery level. Battery 8.6 volts, VCC 5 volts. So the VCC needs to be 5 volts for this thing to work, uh, which it derives from the 9 volt battery via a voltage regulator. Uh, as long as the VCC is like above 4.7, it works accurately. Yeah, this board flexes like crazy. This is some um, proper cheapo, crapo, Chinesey, Chineseo, Bordo, Flexo. Yeah.
I was almost worried actually that I wouldn't be able to stream for you guys for quite a while because uh, I went to I went to connect my phone up to Tether the, uh, today, and um, it would the internet would work through the tethering for for like a few seconds and then it would just cut out and it would stop, and I was thinking oh no what's going on have they caught on to what I'm doing because I'm I'm you know I'm I'm going against my three terms of service because I am tethering using a uh, a third party app which bypasses their you know their detection for um for packet data inspection whatever it is that they do to work out whether I'm tethering or not I only get 30 gig gigabytes a month worth of tethering uh, and so also um, the only reason that I'm tethering is because my broadband here in this location uh, is not quick enough to stream from the upload speed is horrifically slow uh, whereas on my 4G through my mobile phone tethering it's more than fast fast enough to to tether and to um, to upload uh, at quite high quality. Uh, but I only get 30 gigabytes a month uh, on my standard tariff. Like I've got that, that's that's the most you can get. So over here in the UK on three mobile, I've got unlimited everything, unlimited absolutely everything. Like truly unlimited. There's no like high cap. There's no like 100 gig cap. There's nothing. Nothing that happens. I can unlimitedly use as much internet as I like on my phone device. Um, but tethering is limited to 30 gigabytes, and I kill 30 gigabytes in like two days worth of streaming. So that sucked. So I'm using a third-party app to get around that, and uh, it works brilliantly. Uh, I am always, I'm always conscious of the fact that they might catch on to it because all of a sudden my data use has just gone absolutely through the roof, as you can imagine. Um, and it wasn't working earlier, and I was getting a bit worried. But it turns out that um, the tethering app doesn't like it when the phone is on uh, battery saver mode. I think battery saver kills background tasks, uh, and it, it decides to kill the tethering app uh, process. So I took off battery saver, and it works fine. What will we work on today, Bevids? My friend, check the video title. What app is this? Uh, this is an app. Uh, it's actually just called Tether. It's called Tether, <laughs> and it's uh, it's on the uh, Android App Store. And it's got the the picture is a little green cog, uh, and you get like three days trial. Uh, and after the three days trial, you can buy the app for I think it was like three ninety nine. Uh, but for me, it's worth every penny, uh, and you know, I, I want to make sure these live streams are nice and regular and high quality for you guys. So all the donations are coming in. So I was, uh, I, I was like, yeah, you know, I've, I've never really bought an app before. I've never, never spent money on on a phone app before. Uh, so this was like quite a thing for me, like spending money on a phone app. Jesus, what the hell, man? But yeah, I thought, you know what, this app works brilliantly. I can, I can upload like unlimited for as long as I like. I can live stream with this, so yeah, let, let, let's drop these guys some money. So, I, I bought the app, and it works great. You have to also install, uh, so th there's an app that you install on your phone, and then there's a sister app that you install on your Windows uh, machine, or I think it might work on Mac as well. And then you you activate both of them at the same time. You have to you have to download drivers as well. Uh, so you have to download drivers, Windows app, and then Android app, and uh, then they they all talk to each other. And it works. Install Flash Magdisk can use the tether enabler in the download section. It helps a lot with my tethering dropping out. Interesting. Okay. I can, I'll check that out. If I have any issues going forward with this, I'll check that out. Is it possible to hit lows on an 18-inch PA system? Uh, yeah, you just need... The thing with, with PA drivers is they don't have the XMAX. Um, that the car audio drivers do generally. So what you want to do with a, a PA style woofer is they have a shit a load of motor force. Like a, there's a load of driving force to the cone. Uh, so you need to design a box that holds the cone still uh, across quite a wide band of frequencies, which is generally why horns work quite well because they they hold the cone very very still uh, throughout its playable range. 
but yes, of course, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely possible to to hit, like you know, whatever frequencies you like, really, um, with with a PA system. You just have to design the box right. The box design is far more important with a PA system because uh, the woofers are far less uh, lenient to box errors, box design errors. So yeah, you have to make sure your box design is on point to get the desired results from the PA system. I'm hoping this is going to be a nice easy one where I can change the caps, change the FETs and then it's good. I don't want to get into having to change the drivers on these old old school class uh, class D's because they're very very fussy with their drive circuit and their output section. Like it has to all be the same exact same specs and everything as when it was all designed and built. Um, there's not much room for like changing parts and, and using different spec parts that they don't like it. So I'm really hoping I haven't got to touch the drive circuit in this one. Thomas T sends me 50 Norwegian kroners. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you very much indeed. Massively appreciated. Very kind of you. Some more tools, the Hacker desoldering gun. Yes, <laughs> definitely need. Definitely, definitely needed. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm um, I'm getting there with, with, with saving up for it. I've, I need mean, a few more jobs, a few more. I reckon the, the money from um, the money from these the last few repairs I'm doing. So the la the ones which I'm I'm, I'm finishing off uh, shortly is um, obviously this one. I've got a couple more for the amp doctor, uh, and then I'm going to be finishing off the Vibe Reaper. Finally got some parts th came through in the post for that. Um, Lanzar 7K. Um, DC 9K. I reckon once I finish those and uh, the customers have paid up for those amplifiers, then I, I'll have enough money to put towards and to order the uh, Hako desoldering gun. For sure. And obviously, m most of that will, will have come from uh, your, your guys' donations on the channel. Do you use USB tethering? Yeah, it's a USB connection tether. Yeah, that, that's the only way that the app works. Uh, you can only do it via USB. It needs to talk to it needs to talk to the computer uh, via USB connection. The only issue with USB connection tethering is um, your 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 data transfer speed is limited by the slowest USB device in that in uh, that's be you know in that USB driver. So. On the mother, I, I'm not going to pretend I know exactly how this all works, but I think the the motherboard has different controllers for obviously the USB ports, and there'll be a number of different controllers for a number of different USB ports on the back, and I think the USB transfer data transfer speed is is uh, limit. Oh no, these drivers look like they got burnt on the back of the board. Oh no, am I going to have to change the drivers? That's not going to work. Oh, for fuck's sake, this is going to be a I can tell you already. This is probably going to be a bit of a headache. We? See this here, all this brown here. This, this is this. This driver's got silly hot. This driver's got crazy hot. Uh, is there any recommendations for a replacement for P45 N20A? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what the specs of those are, so I'll have a look, a little look later. If you if you send me that to my Bearvid's Facebook page in a message, I'll have a look. I'm gonna wait a bit later on. MTX Old School Thunder, they're very fussy as well with their FETs, so I would recommend just using originals. Just, don't, with, with those boards, don't bother trying to get into the hassle of, of finding 
replacements that are better or what or, or you know different just go for the originals because they are very fussy those boards as well with, uh, with with what parts you use so this board has 5000 watts written on the front uh, which usually means that that is its peak, which often means that its RMS will be around half that, which would mean that this amplifier would be looking to about 2.5k, but I, I don't see it doing that at all. Looking at this board, I, I reckon this thing is going to do probably similar to that BAMF, uh, what we reckoned the BAMF would do. I reckon it's going to do 1800 to 2k maximum. That's only if we can get it up and running though, because I do not like the look of those drivers. And if those drivers are fucked, then this amplifier repair could be a complete nightmare. And I don't plan on spending too long on this one either. Hey Jesse, how's it going? How's it going? Little, little cheeky Sunday repair. Little cheeky Sunday repair. I actually wasn't going to do any work today, but I uh, remembered that I needed to get this one out by Wednesday. I was planning on having the weekend off. Uh, then I was like, oh crap, I need to do this by Wednesday. But I need to get this back to him by Wednesday, which means I need to post it on Tuesday. Which means that if I've got to order any parts, the parts need to be ordered Monday which is tomorrow because things don't go through on a Sunday which means I need to fit them on, on, the, on the Monday so I can get it posted out on the Tuesday but all depends on whether these drivers are going to give me headaches or not because I hate these old school class D's I hate them, I hate working on them they're so flipping fussy. They're so picky. Henrik says, is it worth fixing? Um, if it's as simple as I want it to be, then yeah. If it's as simple as changing the rail caps, changing the output fets, then yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's worth fixing. It should do enough power that it's worth fixing for the time I spend on it. If I have to spend hours and hours and hours working out what's going on with the driver board section, the, the driver section, sorry, um, then maybe it's not. So I'm not going to I'm not going to spend too many hours on this one. If it's not happy, if I can't, if, if I if the drivers are screwed, and if I go to go ahead to replace the drivers, and it doesn't like the new drivers that I fit, and it's all off balance, then I'm probably just going to say, you know what, this is not really worth my time. I'm not going to get a great deal of money for this repair anyway, because it's it's for another service centre. So um, yeah, they, they always want less than what you charge the customer. So and especially seeing as he's bought the parts and supplied the parts for this anyway be expecting a, a reduced repair cost so I'm not going to be looking to spend too much time on this one personally okay that's all the uh, the holes sucked on the uh, underside here so I'm just going to go along now with my um, multimeter probe I'm just going to scratch in between all these pads because these are very close together and I imagine we've probably got some solder bridges going on because these are very close together on these ones yeah, these, these are pretty close together. So, uh, even if you can't see them, sometimes a solder bridge can be hiding there where you cannot see, outside of your sight. And it causes all kinds of trolling, menacey trouble. It can actually damage the board further than it already was if you have a solder bridge. So it will send your rail voltage down the gate and backwards to the drivers. And that's not what you want. Uh, 
It's going. They're still trying to wake up a bit, says Jesse. Uh, I am shattered as well. I, I've, I've been I've been in bed all weekend. Uh, the solder wick that I've got is crap, so I don't I don't bother using the solder wick. I can't get on with it. I need to buy some better solder wick, but it's not a priority right now. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna check one last time. No solder bridges, no short circuits. That's good. We're good. So, I don't like the look of of this crap over here. That looks all kind of browny and burnt on there in, in this kind of driver section. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do this and see whether any of these little transistors have shorted or are showing a low resistance across any of their pins. So we've got 520 there. 520 one way round and 1670 the other way round okay so these may have just got hot that one's also showing 520 and that one's also showing 728 that way and that one's showing 728 okay so they're not shorted they're not showing a low resistance and they're all showing the same uh, diode mode readings which is a positive thing when it comes to these transistors so perhaps I got lucky and they just got a little bit warm but did not actually die. Let's have a look on the top of the board. So that 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 was uh, that was these guys over here. Um, so what have we got? Okay. These have potentially been replaced before because they're sitting higher up off the board than the others. And they're the same batch. Matching the batch on the drivers isn't isn't as important. So they're raised slightly higher off the board, uh, but they've not they've not kind of come loose with the solder. The, the legs are still protruding nicely through the holes. So, okay. What has happened though is on this inductor here. Um, this inductor's obviously been shaking around quite a bit because the uh, these are kind of held on with these. Um, with these zip ties, so the, the zip ties like they kind of you know they hold the inductor down while the CA glue sets, uh, and that looks like it's been snapped off. And I wonder if that's from vib vibration. Um, so I wonder actually whether this inductor is okay or not. It's a bit more wobbly than the other. It's not too bad. It's not like I wouldn't have said that that would have come off the board, but it's possible. Yeah, anything's possible here. I'm just going to check the continuity of that inductor to make sure that it's actually not snapped and it's just the CA glue holding it down. So if I hold my multimeter on there, uh, where are we? Here. I'm just going to give it a wiggle from the other side just to make sure that beeping doesn't go away. Nope, that's pretty con constant. And this other one, uh, it's also pretty constant. So I don't think it snapped. No, I think we're good. I don't think it snapped. If there is an issue with the inductor, then it may have shorted, but it is actually quite nicely seated. It's actually there's quite a lot of CA glue around here, so I think we'll be alright there. Uh, could be your protection circuit, but uh, I doubt it. Class AB isn't my speciality. Class D amps are much easier. Uh, Mr. Burbage is the same way. Class AB is a bit alien to him. Yeah, Class AB uh, um, is uh, far less experienced with Class AB than I do Class D. Class D is kind of my baby. Um, I like the modern Class D. I like working on them. Uh, okay, one second guys, let's have a quick look. I'm just going to grab my my stream um, link. Where's my stream link? Keysight is also, uh, well, I, I like the, the the scope I have is a HP branded, um, and that's the uh, Agilent, Agilent scope, yeah, Agilent, yeah, Agilent, uh, uh, Agilent HP, all the same. 
I'm hoping it has Tetris like Sammy's. Yeah, I love the Tetris mode. When I get bored, I just jump on jump on my scope. It has Tetris built in as like an Easter egg. <laughs> Yo, Carlos is here. Awesome. Almost missed that in the chat there. I had to scroll up a little bit. I've been working a little bit, so I've not been looking at the live chat for a while. How's it going, Carlos? Awesome. Okay. So what we can do now, so the uh, the driver the, the driver transistors on this board here, uh, they haven't shorted out. Um, there's no short circuits in the drive section. There's no short circuits on the between the gates and the source and drain of any of these, um, which generally means that the drive circuit is uh, is pretty pretty okay. But the only way we'll know that for sure is by turning the amplifier on and uh, and seeing what the drive waves look like. Now, this is a single ended. So we have only N-channel MOSFETs uh, on this amplifier. Only N-channel MOSFETs on this amplifier. No P-channels. That's all. That's that, that's a different type of class D. Um, so we have N-channel MOSFETs on here. So we have uh, a high and low uh, rail voltages, and uh, we need to see what the drive waves look like. So let's uh, turn on my brand new trusty power supply unit here, which was uh, bought with mostly bought with the very kind donations from you guys so yeah wait can I yeah you can see that now can't you? yeah this this bench power supply was pretty much bought mostly by you guys so thank you very much very very useful and it is uh, it's a current limiting it's got constant current mode constant voltage mode uh, lots of protection relays and stuff it's, it's a pretty good unit uh, on one of my previous live streams though it did kill some power supply fets that would not have been killed had I been using my old small five amp power supply. Um, but I think that's just a pay, like a payoff, you know. If you're going to be using a nice, high quality bench power supply that's adjustable, um, so it, even though the current limiting on it is quick, it's not quite quick enough to not blow uh, the power supply fets if there's a serious drive issue, and that happened on the Lanzar. If there's a serious drive issue, if the fets all get turned on at once. Um, then, yeah, the only way that they're going to survive is if the power supply you're using literally cuts out at the exact same moment that that happens, which the small 9 volt 4, uh, four amp power supply did. It does do that, it cuts out literally straight, straight away because it physically can't provide the current. Whereas this current limiting one, it can provide the current, but it will limit it. But there's a small delay uh, in between when the limiter kicks in. And so during that delay between when the limiter kicks in, uh, it did supply the current for like a nanosecond, which did kill the fence. How's it going, Kajon? Kajon Kajone sixty-five. Awesome. Thanks for jumping on the stream, my friend. What's up? Marshmallow Alone. Uh, there's a good remix of Marshmallow Alone by Hedex. If any of you like jump up, if any of you like jump up music, then Hedex did a pretty good remix of, of Marshmallow Alone. I think it was Hedex, or was it Leveler? I think it was. No, I think it's Hedex. Cannot stay. No problem, Carlos. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you for jumping on and saying hi anyway. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll probably see you next week on the live streams. I've got a shitload of work to do next week, so I'll probably be live streaming a fair bit next week. Okay. Just before I power up, I'm just going to make sure the power supply didn't die. I don't think it did. I think the power supply survived on this one. Yep, power supply survived. Power supply is all good. We have no continuity between positive and negative. So yeah, power supply has most likely survived in this case. So uh, now let's see. Will this amplifier, will this amplifier give me a drive switching wave without me having to feed it with um, to feed it with some RCA voltage, some RCA, some RCA signal? Hopefully, it just comes on and shows me the drive waves. Show me the drive waves, baby. 
baby, baby. Okay. I'm going to set my current limit here uh, at. Let's have a look. This thing shouldn't need much current to get going whatsoever. I'm going to set it at about 0.4 amps. Okay, 0.4 amps. Um, it will draw some current initially, which it's already done to charge the um, to charge the the main power supply capacitors here. So it's done that already because we're sitting at our, we're sitting at 12 volts. I'm going to down the down the voltage from 12 volts. I'm going to down it to about 9.8 volts. Uh, that lowers the rail voltage, makes it safer to work on. Also makes it safer if there are any issues with the amplifier. The rail voltage doesn't build quite as high. So we're going to get stick that up at about 9.6 actually 9.6. And let's make sure the, the voltage is stable. Let's attach this to the amplifier here. Uh, what are we doing? Oh yes, that needs to go onto there. Okay. Hi Elena. Thank you for joining in the live stream. Uh, let's see then. So we have a nice stable 9.4, 9 9.6 volts, whatever, on the, uh, on the power supply rail here. It's, uh, it's bouncing around a little bit. This, this, power, this power supply, I've noticed, it sometimes doesn't like sitting at certain voltages. It will fluctuate a little bit up and down uh, if it doesn't like sitting at a certain voltage. I'm just going to crank it up a tiny bit. So uh, not put it at 9.8. seems a bit more stable. Okay, 9.8. Uh, cool. So we, we actually... Uh, the, 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 uh, the main rail capacitors here, the main rail caps, if you're just joining the stream, these are actually all vented and uh, they have blown and they're all kind of shaky, you can feel it inside or wobbling around, so these were dead. Uh, so I've got some replacements for these, uh, but before I go ahead and fit the replacement capacitors, it's a good idea, it's, it's actually better to power the board up like this with the main rail caps off, because when you power it up, it hasn't got to charge the rail caps, which means it turns on quicker, and then there's no high voltage left hanging around on the board when you shut her down, um, which can dump through like a, a driver transistor if the driver transistor is blown uh, then it will dump that through the transistor and maybe damage some more components so the fact that we've not got any rail capacitors is actually uh, ideal in this scenario but it's not usually time effective to remove the rail capacitors from every amplifier you're working on um, but if you've got to remove them anyway then do your most of your testing with them out the board and I think that that's probably going to be better so we're going to apply some uh, remote voltage now let's see does this thing come on Okay, there we go. So we can see we've got a, dri a drive wave building there. Can you see that there? Uh, it doesn't look very happy, so I wonder whether that is because um, we, the, the current limit is too low. So yeah, it's limiting the current and we're dropping down to 8.4 volts. So I'm going to allow some slight more current to pass. going to just allow some a little bit more current to pass. So we're going to bump it up to about 0.8 amps. A little bit more current to pass. Okay. So it's, it's, it's still dropping, it's still drawing 0.8 amps. Uh, and now, is any of this stuff heating up? Usually these amps don't need that much uh, current to get going, especially with the rail caps out. So let's have a look. Is it, is it, tr is it starting to build the, it is starting to build the, the, the rail voltage. So if we go have, ahead and have a look here, um, the rail voltage that it's trying to build up to is 46 volts. Uh, and it is drawing more than 0.8 amps. So what I'm going to do is, I don't think it should be drawing more than 0.8 amps. Especially with the rail caps out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, um, take my thermal imager here and see where the issue is that's causing it to draw more than, than the current I think it should be. So it should show me, just before I do that, it should show me both positive and negative rails. So if I do that again, so over here we've got, yeah, so it's trying to build, uh, so we have got negative rail. The negative rail looks a little bit skanky though. I mean these capacitors will work also as smoothing capacitors, so um, let's see. Yeah, so oh, got, got a, a very spiky wave on that. Um, that's a very spiky wave. You see that? That's what the, 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 the negative rail looks like. Um, and the positive rail looks like this. The, see, the positive rail looks nice and smooth. It's a straight line DC. Uh, the negative rail does not look particularly happy. Now, I wonder 
whether that is an issue with the uh, rectifiers here. So on the board we have, uh, oops, get the right camera view, we've got these rectifiers here, which will take the, the AC uh, output from the transistors and they will rectify it to what's supposed to be a straight DC line of DC, which it's doing for the high, but it's not doing for the low voltage. So that's the high voltage. That's doing that's doing it correctly. So we've got the high voltage ones over here. That's over there. So the negative rail voltage ones must be over this side. Okay, I'm just going to pause the scope on here. So this is what the, the the drive wave that's being sent from the outputs of the transformers looks like for the low for the the, the negative rail. So. You see how the wave kind of looks like it's going to spike up and then it falls down? Um, I think the input to the high voltage, the, 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 the positive voltage, looked a bit different to that. Now you see how that, that's, that's looks, that looks more, more correct to me. That looks, that looks much better. So um, I think that there is potentially an issue with the power supply or one of these transformers. I wonder whether, whether one of these transformers has a, a shorted winding or something on one of the outputs uh, because it doesn't seem to be very happy. It's drawing current and it's not only drawing current but this, this, this wave on the negative voltage side does not look very good. Let's have a look, another look at that again. Yeah, that doesn't look too good. So I'm going to see whether anything's heating up on the board, uh, because if it's drawing current, then it means the power must be being dissipated somewhere, which means that something is most likely getting hot somewhere. It doesn't look like anything is getting hot on my uh, on my thermal imager here. I can't see anything that's getting warm, and we are only dumping like 0 0.8, 0 0.8 amps into here. See, what I don't want to do is I don't want to increase the current too much um, because this thing should be turning on with just not just 0 0.8 amps. We've not got any rail caps in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the voltage a tiny bit on my power supply here. So we're at 9.6 at the moment. We're going to jump it up to about 10 point... Let's jump it up to about 10.4. And I'm going to increase the current to 1.2. Okay, now let's see if that makes any difference. So the power supply FETs aren't getting hot themselves. They're not getting hot. Okay. Now let's see if that makes any difference whatsoever. Okay, so the thing actually is coming on and is not struggling to come on this time. But that wave does still not look good to me. And then it, then it struggles again. You see, it comes on, it draws 1.3, and then it struggles again. Then we got then, then it's dropping down to the power supply is actually limiting the current there. So we're drawing over an amp. We're drawing over an amp there. And the power supply is limiting the current again. So I reckon if we was to if we was to give this too much, too much voltage, too much too much current, we might kill the power supply. Aha! Is there something in here that's getting hot? Let's have a look. I see, I see a little, a little warmer red patch here. Where are you coming from, my friend? Anything over here getting warm? Where are you coming from? It could just be an IC that's heating up. ICs do get warm when they run, so it might be a false alarm. Okay, yes, there's something that's getting pretty hot here. We're up at 40 degrees over here. Um, now let's see where is that this is quite hard to make out on this something is something is getting over to about 40 degrees here. I wonder if I can show you how can I, can I do that on here let's see let's see where I can move uh, where are we here so if I can get that over to here okay so angle that up a little bit. That's my finger there that's hot at the moment on the screen. This isn't the best of uh, thermal images so I wonder now whether you can see that whether that thing heats up or not. Yeah, see it there? Something gets pretty hot and it's in the driver section there. Um, now 
because this screen is so low resolution, though, it's actually quite hard to make out what that is. I'm going to see whether I can change some settings on here to, to make it a little bit easier for me to see what it is that's getting hot. I might have to turn to the uh, the trusty old alcohol method uh, and spray some alcohol on the board. That's what I'm going to do. This is this is a little bit too hard to see. I'm going to take some some 99% isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to spray that over this section where things were, were getting a bit warm. And we're going to see on the board where it starts to uh, where it starts to uh, evaporate from. So I'm going to move this over so you guys can see on the camera there. So there we are. Okay, so I thought it was going to be the IC. There's a there's a there's a little um a little op amp or op amp here, perhaps. Um, I thought it was going to be that, but that's not. It's not evaporating from that. Oh, it is. It is evaporating from the from the op amp pretty quick. Now these op amps can run warm, so that's perhaps not an issue. Just seeing if anything else next to it is getting warm. Oh, the focus on this is awful. The focus on this thing is dreadful. This uh, you can you can adjust the focus inside this, which is maybe what I'm going to do just now. I keep seeing you touch random stuff. Um, so when I power the board down, because I've taken the, the rail caps off the board, there's no high voltage that remains on the board once I power it down. Um, in other videos, I will touch the back of the FETs whilst the amplifier is running, which can have quite high DC voltage on them, uh, and also high voltage switching uh, on them. But I'm not, uh, I'm not grounded here. So like in my chair, I'm very, very conscious of the fact that when I'm, if, if I need to touch. To feel, I mean, this is why I've got the, uh, the the thermal imager now, so I don't have to touch the FETs with the high voltages on them. But if I do need to touch the FETs with the high voltages on them, um, then I know that I'm not grounded in this position, and I can touch like 60, 80, 100 volts DC, and feel absolutely nothing. Feel absolutely nothing. I'm not grounded at all with the way I'm sitting. Um, but obviously, the idea is not to do that. That's very dangerous. So I wouldn't recommend you do that. Get a th get yourself a thermal imager. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not, I know. I, I don't generally get. I don't generally get shocked at all. Uh, very, very rare for that to happen. So I'm not too happy about this low side. Sorry, this low, the low voltage uh, drive wave on these rectifiers here. I don't like how that looks. It looks, it looks different to the to the uh, the high voltage rail. That's the low. That's the high. So I'm going to pause it again on the high, and then unpause it on the low. Okay, it looks a bit better now. It looks a bit better now. It's still not brilliant. It looks a bit better now, but the amplifier is still drawing more than one point. Was it? It's drawing more than 1.5 amps. Okay. The only thing that's getting slightly warm is this small IC here, which perhaps is fine to get warm. So I'm going to give it a bit more current, a little bit more voltage. I'm going to bump it up to about 11 volts on there. Uh, we're going to bump the current up to about 2 amps. Okay, so we're now at 2 amps and about 11.2 volts. So, you know, this thing should not be drawing anything more than 2 amps to, to idle. That, I mean, that, that's a bit ridiculous if it's drawing more than 2 amps to idle. I'm going to watch double SSM, SMM's vids. Peace out. Awesome. Thanks for joining in. Beverage, when you weren't streaming live, we checked out some of your old vids. Oh my god, you look so different with the hair. I look better now without any. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some terrible old videos on my channel um, of me looking very different. But thank you. I appreciate that you say I look better now. That's good. That's always good. Okay, so the amplifier comes on and it draws a steady 1.4 amps. And the things that are getting hot are the IC, which is leveling off at about 38 degrees. Uh, some, some, some large resistors that are getting warm, that's fine. 
Okay, so, so it seems that this amplifier just does tend to draw a little bit of current uh, when it's idling. A little bit more than usual. 1.5, 1.6 amps, and it is actually happy. It's not limiting anymore. Um, so we've got some some things over here. Oh, wow, we've got a, a, a by the looks of it, a driver perhaps getting up to 68 degrees over here. Okay, so we've got some, some, some things over here getting a little warm. Let's see, what's that that's getting up to 68 degrees there? So yeah, some of the driver transistors here are getting warm. Uh, now the driver transistors can run warm, but I would have imagined they should all run warm in a uniform manner. So we've got like the, the different banks here on the output section. So if the drivers were going to run warm, I would imagine that they'd all be running warm together to the same value. But we've got most of them staying cold. And then by the looks of it, a couple of ones here which are hitting 60 something degrees when the amp idles without any output fits in. Which perhaps is a bit of a red flag. And just so, just so as it happens, it, it happens to be the ones that were uh, slightly scorched on the bottom of the board, even though they didn't read as a short. So at least I know that now the amplifier comes on and it doesn't draw excessive excessive current um, and you know it's actually coming on so what we can do now is we can measure and see what some of the drive waves look like and I imagine that we're probably going to have some bad looking drive waves because I think these drivers definitely did get hit and are damaged but they just don't show a short circuit on our tester so we're going to probe the gates of these uh, the, the low side and the high side and see whether there's any drive waves um, without needing to feed the amplifier with, with anything Okay, so I don't think we're getting any drive waves. And no, don't seem to, we seem to be getting a little bit of noise on there, some some sawtooth wave noise. Uh, that's probably because we haven't got any rail capacitors fitted. That's fine. So we're not getting any drive waves. So I think this amplifier we're going to need to feed it with some RCA signal. So I'm going to turn my turn on my frequency generator, and we're going to chuck a 50 hertz through her. I'm going to start off on relatively low amplitude, so let's plug this into the inputs. What's up Hunter? Awesome, thanks for joining in the stream pal. Did you check how clean the signal is on your new power supply? Yeah, new power supply is beautifully clean, yeah lovely and smooth. Um, is the amp worth fixing? Um, if it's a simple issue, just FETs and CAPs, yes. Um, uh, but it's not worth spending hours and hours and hours on, on something like this, no. So that's all set up now. We set up our frequency generator. So let's go ahead and see whether now we have any drive waves on the output. Interesting. So on the output, we seem to have. Oh, uh, weird. Okay, I need to change where my scope is grounded to, um, because as you can see here, when the amplifier off, I'm actually getting some uh, some some noise of that 50 hertz coming through the scope. Hey, <laughs> what the fuck? You can get about 0 0.6 volts worth of um, 50 hertz, and that's on the gate. That's on the gates. <laughs> Why is that on the gates? Okay, uh, that's possibly because I need to change where my scope is grounded to. So. Let's, let's go ahead now and ground my scope to the output of virtual ground. And if need be, I'm going to fit one of the rail caps. Because that could be also throwing, screwing my results a little bit. So, um, yeah, in order to, to ground this properly, we, we're going to ground it over at the RCA ring, which is usually the ground for the output section. So, we're just going to see, make sure we've got the right one over here. Which one's the which one's the ring? Come on. I 
think you can change the name of the video title later to exactly what the core issues of the repair is. Uh, yeah, sure. That's that's not a bad idea. We'll we'll, we'll do that. We should do that. I'll change the uh, the title a bit later. This this one, the core issues on this one is just output section. So like literally. Hmm. It seems that the RCA perhaps has actually snapped, the uh, RCA ground leg has snapped on this set. It's not making continuity to the ground pin. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit one of the rail caps because there's a little bit of noise uh, that I can see. I, I want to try and get rid of that. Uh, so we're going to fit one of the rail caps. See if that uh, sorts out any of the noise. I'm not. I want, I'm not seeing any drive waves. So when I when I uh, gave this amplifier 50 hertz worth of RCA input, I didn't see any drive waves. So I'm really hoping that I haven't got to go mess around with this drive circuit because that's going to be a flipping headache. Beverage, your vids were awesome to watch for sure. Don't worry about how you look. <laughs> your fusion amp with your Pioneer woofer caught my attention and brought back a memory. Ah, oh, what was that one? What was that one? I can't remember what video that was now. Go. Make some holes. Drop her in. Capacitor. Capacitor. How many watts can this amp get? Um, no, I, I, I was guessing that it's probably gonna. We're probably gonna see like 1800 to 2k. It's probably gonna be similar to that Banff that we were looking at last week. Um, yeah, the Banff has got fucking. The Banff still isn't fixed. So even though I rewound the uh, inductors, I don't think it likes them. Uh, it's not happy with the inductors at all. Hello SK Electronics. Good to see you on the stream, pal. Yo Nicholas, usually the ground on the RCA connectors is not directly connected to ground of amp input. No, it's not, it's different, it's floating, isn't it? Um, but what, what, what I was saying just then is, uh, so I usually use the uh, RCA ring ground uh, when I'm probing the output section, but um, either this amplifier has a different design or it has one of the legs on the RCA input um, input block snapped because um, 
the inputs of the RCA, the RCA inputs over here, they aren't actually connected. They don't seem to be connected to the board. The, 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 the ring, sorry, the ground ring doesn't seem to be connected to the board, so that's a bit weird. Well, no worries. Okay, so we fit, fitted one rail cap. So I'm going to see if that uh, makes any difference to our waves, our wavy waves. Let's have a look. So we, we, I'm still allowing this thing to pass. So this thing was, was drawing uh, one point, it was floating between 1.5 and 1.6 amps on idle. Uh, so I'm going to clock the current down from 2 amps to 1.8. Uh, and it should still draw 1.6 now that we fitted this rail cap it, it'll, it'll just take a little while to a little while longer to turn on to charge that cap one cap isn't very much though uh, to charge it should be fine what 1.8 amps should be more than enough to charge that cap without any issues Cool. Yep, she's up and running. And yeah, that has sorted out the uh, the, the the noise on the uh, on the rails there, so that's fine. Okay, that sorted the noise out on the rails. So, no drive wave still on the uh, on the output section. So let's let's plug this back in and see what's going on with our with our frequency generator here. Okay, so still no drive waves. Let's have a look. Is the so the protection light's not on? So if the thing's not in protect. Power supply's working. Okay. Uh, how did the jail audio turn out? Uh, I, there's a video uploaded of that one. You can watch it. You can watch the uh, the outcome of the jail audio if you want. Attach my uh, scope ground now to the uh, to the RCA ring because um, we've got 50 hertz that we're reading on the scope on the um, we're reading 50 hertz on the on the gates which like a 50 hertz sine wave which is isn't isn't right at all that's not right at all so let's turn my scope down back here so now you can see we're reading a 50 hertz sine wave so that should be on the inputs here. Yep, so we've got a 50 hertz sine wave on the inputs. So we shouldn't see that on the gate anymore. We do. Weird. What's going on there? It's like pulsing. What the fuck? What the hell? The amplifier's not actually turned on right now. The amplifier's turned off. The only reason that I can think that this is pulsing like that, okay, is because that is a combination of the 50 hertz through my mains, right, through my mains, uh, elect ele electrical mains in the house, which oscillates at 50 hertz, so you see that noise on the screen when, you know, something's not grounded properly, plus the, the fact that I've got 50 hertz going in from the signal generator, they're just very slightly out of phase, which is what's causing this to kind of go wah, wah. It's like when you play two notes that are right next to each other. Uh, they oscillate like this, um, so rare. Okay. 
So it doesn't like, my scope doesn't like being grounded on the RCAs. There's something weird going on with the RCA inputs because the RCA inputs don't seem to be connected to the board on the, the ground ring, doesn't seem to be connected to the board. So I wonder whether that has snapped off. But that shouldn't really make a difference. We still don't have any drive waves. Okay, what I'm going to do... I'm not too happy that, that these drivers are heating up over here. Ground loop from scope and function gen. That's very, very possible. So this is a really old school style class D uh, circuit design. Uh, I fucking hate working on these. So we've still got a couple of these drivers that are heating up to sort of 50, 60 degrees. So I think that there is definitely a drive fault on this board. Um, and I fucking hate it when there's a drive fault on these boards because it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare to find and sort. Uh, and they, they, don't, they don't like replacement parts. I'm gonna fucking... So if I'm gonna replace all these drivers over here, then I need some spare A56 and some spare A42s. Okay. Hi Michael, how's it going? Ah, oh, Habib Hughes. Hi Michael, how's it going, buddy? Okay, right. Let's see if I've got any spare drivers for this then. Let's see whether I do actually have any spare drivers. If I don't have any spare drivers, then this is going to be a right headache in the park. And um, I'm going to have to order some new drivers and I'll just pray that they arrive before Tuesday because this one needs to go back by Wednesday. Okay, 54N. I'm going to try one more thing. So these, these FETs, which this amplifier needs, are N-channel MOSFETs. They are 31 N20Ds. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly remind myself of the specification of those, and I'm going to drop in on the board uh, something similar that, that I don't care about. So 31 N20D FETs. We're going to have a quick look and see what these are. Uh, let's get my uh, window capture. Okay, here we go. So 31 N20Ds. I think these are 200 volt thir 31 amp. Yeah, 200 volt 31 amp. So, can I throw in an, uh, a, a 640N temporarily? Because what I want to do is I, I'm just just to make sure that this 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 circuit isn't playing me around. Um, I'm going to put one FET per bank that I don't care about. So something something like a really old 640N that I've nicked from a donor amplifier. And I'm going to see whether they die or whether the thing tries to switch and give me any waves. So I've got a, a massive whole load of uh, 640Ns here which I've taken from donor amplifiers. Uh, the, 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 the FET has survived. Hey Volvo, have I missed much of this repair? Um, not a huge amount. Uh, what I've done, this amplifier had a blown output section, uh, and um, so blown output section, it had all the rail caps were blown. Uh, the, the main rail caps were blown, and also the rail caps over by the speaker terminals were blown as well. Um, and that, we most likely think, is as a result of the flyback effect. So um, if, if one set side of outputs dies on these boards, um, then the inductors can uh, create a flyback power supply effect that raises the rail voltage up way higher than it should ever have been, which can generally blow the rail caps and any, any capacitors that are connected to uh, the main rails and ground, because rail voltage shoots up way higher than was ever intended uh, as a result of the, the, side of the, power, the side of the output section that survived it, it, it sort of, uh, and the one that died, it creates a flyback effect in the in the inductors and yeah, blows the the um, blows the, the rail caps. 
So that, I think that's what's happened here. So we, we, we're going to get to replacing them, all the rail caps and stuff. Uh, but for the, for the time being, I want to try and find out what's going on with the output section. We've possibly got some dead drivers. Um, they don't read as dead on the on the tester, on the on the multimeter. They, they actually seem to all read as kind of okay. But there's some brown scorching sort of underside of the board. And um, yeah, they, these ones here mm. in the middle of the board are heating up. Uh, they're heating up pretty hot, like 60 degrees. Uh, and all the others are staying pretty cold. So I think we have issues on that one. Uh, I'm just quickly seeing whether I can um, whether I can actually fit uh, some other FETs that I don't care about too much. Here we go, 200 volt, 18 amps. So 640 ends are actually potentially a little bit, a little bit better. They're, they're, they're a better option uh, to use on this board than the 31 and 20 Ds. But these boards are very, very fussy with the FETs that you use. So I'm not going to replace them finally with the... Um, with the 640 ends, I'm going to have to replace them with the original 31 and 20 Ds. But just for the meantime, just because I want to fit some FETs that I don't care about if they die, I'm going to throw a couple of 640 ends on here just to see what happens. Let's see. I want to try and choose uh, FETs from, from a bank that I haven't got a lot of. Uh, and that way uh, I won't need to use them in future uh, if they die. So what have we got? That one will do, that one will do. I'm just going to make sure that these are okay. Okay to drop in so I don't damage anything further on the board. That one looks good. RDS of 0.4 on the meter, which is too high going by the specs, but we have test lead resistance on the meter. And that one's four as well. Just check how many banks we have on the outputs. So we need to fit one per bank for this thing to actually come on and not draw current. So we can see how many banks we've got by seeing how many parallel gate resistors there are. Uh, let's see, these gate resistors are looking like 47 ohms. So we need to see 47 ohms. We've got that one there, that's a bank. That's a bank, That's the. this is all part of the same bank. Oh wow, okay, so we've got a large, so we've got two banks so we, we've only got two banks in this amplifier we've got the high the high side and the low side is, is all one bank um, so I can go ahead and literally just solder two FETs to this board and the thing should come on if it's gonna work so I can solder one FET to the high side and one FET to the low side and that will also make it quite easy to see if they're gonna heat up and explode or not Let's put them at either ends. I'm going to put them at either ends of each from each other. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to put them on ones that actually have pads that are remaining. One, two, three. And one, two, three. And when, when I put te when I put FETs in temporarily like this, I always literally just uh, put a blob of solder on the top of the pads and solder them in at 90 degrees to the board. And I don't I don't go through the holes. I don't solder through the holes because if you keep soldering through the holes, then you can damage the veers by keep repeatedly heating the, you know, you want to do the least amount of soldering possible on these. So these FETs aren't the right FETs for this amplifier because it's very fussy on the output section, but it's enough. They will tell me, they'll tell me enough information about the health status of this output section without having to, uh, you should fit the second rail cap. Okay, let's fit one of the second rail caps. Um, problem is, I don't, the, the only reason I'm not, I wasn't fitting the rail caps just now, uh, is because from other amplifiers, it makes things a lot safer. If there's an issue with output section, uh, it, if, the, if the FETs blow, then it doesn't discharge, doesn't dump all the rail cap storage through the blown component and backwards to the drive circuit, uh, which is not what I want to do. So let's just see, I've got one there. I just want to make sure to see what, um, so the, these both connected together, these both connected together. Okay. So I need one next to it then. So okay, let's let's put one more rail cap in. Let's put the uh, the other the other height the other voltage rail cap. Okay. Let's put one of the other rail caps in. 
So looks like we've got two caps for the positive voltage rail and two caps for the negative voltage rail. I'm going to find where the hole is in this one. Where's the hole? There it is. There's the hole. There's the hole. I'm not too far off my Hakko desoldering gun. I'm getting getting much much closer to that. So I should probably have that within the next few weeks, I reckon. Take another one of these bad boy caps. Slot her in. Remember to get the polarity correct because otherwise that could end, end badly. If you get the polarity wrong with these caps, that will end very badly. Okay, that's the other rail cap in, so let's flip it back over them and let's uh, put some power and see whether these 640 ends I've just fitted go poof or nah. So let's put our, get our probe here, let's, put, let's, uh, let's go back to our original ground point. There we go, that works for everything else. So, I'm just going to pulse the power supply uh, and, and make sure that there's no DC. Uh, what we should see is we've got a high side and a low side. So, on the low side, we should see that there is negative rail on the gate and the source and nothing on the drain. There should be nothing on the drain of the low side. And on the high side, there should be positive rail on the, on the drain and nothing on the source and gate. So, I'm just going to pulse the power supply just to very, very, just to build the, the rail voltage a teeny tiny little bit. Um, and then I'm just going to see whether there's any DC that shouldn't be where. Okay, so. Okay, so we've got positive rail voltage. All right, so I'm guessing this is probably the high side if we've got positive rail voltage there. And on the gate and the source, we have nothing, which is correct. So that's, that, that's possibly working fine. Uh, this one over here, we have the. This is going to be the low side, so we should have negative voltage rail on the uh, gate and the source, which we do, and there should be D nothing on the drain, which is correct. Okay, so there's no DC voltage where there shouldn't be. I can see at this point. So let's go ahead. Now this power supply probably is set to be doing enough current to um, to actually cause this thing to blow up if it goes wrong. But uh, that, that's that's the, that's what happens when we use a, a power supply that is bigger than we're used to. So I'm going to probe the um, I'm going to probe the uh, the low side. I'm gonna, no, I'm going I'm to probe the high side. I'm going to probe because it's easier to see on the scope screen. I'm going to probe the high side drive because that will tell me what's going on. So what low side? So the high side will be on this one. So let's see. Okay, so it's drawing more than 1.8 amps. Um, they're not they're not heating up instantly. This one feels a little bit warm. We didn't get any drive waves whatsoever. Okay, so it is drawing some current. Um, the the current limit the current is being limited at 1.8 amps, and the uh, the input voltage to the amplifier is is therefore being lowered to about nine volts. Um, so. Going on. 
So why would that FET be heated? Be, be heated? I see. So well, no drive waves. 63 volts on the on the rails. So they're not being driven at all. No drive whatsoever on these FETs. Sixty-three volts again on the rails. Okay, so they're not they're not heating up. They're not heating up. But they're not being driven either. So it looks like we have drive circuit failure then. Um, of both high side and low side perhaps. Something's not happy. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is I'm probably gonna have to order some um you know it makes sense to just refresh the whole of these um to, to save there being any any issues uh it makes sense with these older style class d's they're very fussy and very picky um i'm probably going to go ahead and literally just order originals parts for these and replace all these driver transistors some of them look like they got scorched on the bottom none of them are showing um none of them are showing any shorts or anything like that or any low resistances between any of their legs uh, but it does look a little bit it looks like it's got hot you can tell on the underside of the board that it's got hot but if it's ample draw more current once it starts switching the output fets. Uh, yeah, see that's interesting because it's so it's already drawing this amplifier is already drawing more current with the fets in place, uh, but it's not switching. So that leads me to believe that there is some leakage somewhere, which is probably in the drive circuit. So with the fets in, let's see, are, are the, is, is the drive circuit heating up more than it was before? Because it's obviously drawing more current. So we're still being limited with 1.8 amps and we've only got 9.1 9.1 volts going into the amplifier. Uh, the amplifier is it still is switching and it's still operational at 9.1 volts, but it is being is lim we're limiting it at 1.8 amps. I'm going to try giving it 2 amps. I'm going to try giving it nothing nothing is getting mad hot. So I think we're relatively safe to just give it a tiny bit more current just to see if for any reason it needs a teeny tiny bit more current to come on. So I'm just going to give it, I'm going to give it 2.2, I'm going to allow 2.2 to pass, which is a bit high really. Okay, it drops back down to 1.5, but there is not any switching. Okay, so it required a bit, and we have also fitted, that's, that's another thing we did, we fitted this, uh, this other capacitor here. So um, I, I really need a, a camera from my uh, power supply so you can see what it's doing. I, I will sort that out. I'll get another camera angle set up and I'll have it in the corner of the screen like the scope is up here. So you can see the, the power supply, how much current things are drawing. It's very interesting. Um, far more, far better than when I was just using a small little tiny pissy supply. You couldn't see how much current the thing was drawing. So yeah, the amplifier, it draws more current initially, uh, but then it levels out and it, it goes back down and it only draws 1.5 amps. So if we do that again, so it limits it to 2.2 and then it drops down to 1.5 amps with 10.5 volts worth of input. Uh, and we have stable rail voltages, but we have no class D switch. If we check out the thermal imager here, we can see that there are still parts of the drive circuit that are reaching, well, well how hot is this getting? Well, it's not getting as hot as it was before. It's only reaching 40, what are we? 35, 40, 40 degrees? 43 degrees this little driver here is heat, heating up to but the drive section isn't heating up in a uniform manner uh, we've got one side of the drive circuit which appears to be heating up a lot more than the other uh, and the, the side of the drive circuit that's heating up a lot more than the other is the part of the drive circuit that was looking a bit brown on the bottom of the board there Now I've put some rail caps in, so I need to be conscious of the fact that when I turn the amplifier off, there's probably still some rail voltage, although it does sync relatively quickly. So this is probably why the amplifier draws 1.5 amps uh, when it's idling. So the, the pull-down resistors, which are going to be these these bad boys here on the board just behind the, um, the, the transformers, it looks like these pull the rail voltage down pretty quick. Look, if I, if I give the amp some power again, you can see the rail voltage climbs all the way up to 62, 64 volts. Then when I let go again, see how quickly that, that comes, back, comes back down. 
that's coming down very very quickly for pull out resistors so obviously that 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 being there is going to cause the amplifier to draw a little bit of current from the supply to hold the rail voltage up to overcome that resistance that's fine that's fine now, I'm, I'm more happy with that now that it's drawing 1.5 amps at, at standard standby so the the, the two um, donor 640 ends that I fitted are staying absolutely stone cold which is what I'd expect because we've got the correct rail voltages on all of their legs uh, and it's not oscillating it's not doing anything funky uh, but we don't have the class D switch we don't have the, the feedback loop isn't isn't being created um, it's not switching so I think we have drive circuit fault so we need to go ahead and order a bunch of these driver transistors replace those and see whether that resolves it I think that's the solution for this one uh, a bit annoying because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that done by the deadline for this one which is Wednesday um, so I'm gonna have to tell the uh, tell tell Gordon at the amp doctor that this is probably not gonna be ready by the, by the time he wants it Okay, so this needs driver transistors over here, NPN and PMP. We have uh, a C1027, which I do have some spares of, I believe, but I also need some um, some KMPS A56 and some A42, which I don't think I have. I'll check my drawers, but I don't think I have any spares of those. Uh, that would probably be in old driver drawer. Those driver transistors have an issue, possibly open. Uh, yes, open. I think I think that they're, they're, if anything, they're going to be open uh, because I checked them with the multimeter and uh, the, none of them were short. So um, I got consistent readings between their legs, um, like o like the high side and the low side. They were, they were reading the correct values uh, as per what I would expect to, for, for it to read. Uh, so I think yes, if anything, they're going to be open. I think you're right. Uh, now let's see. My phone is going crazy down here. I've seen in high phonics amp where the audio driver circuit caused the rail voltages to to, to, bleh, to increase going beyond the rail cap rate and cause them to explode. So I'll leak. I wouldn't have thought the drive the the, the audio driver circuit would would uh, would cause that. I'm not sure how it would be possible for for that to happen. It may do. But I don't know. Um, I haven't come across that yet. The the only the only um, reason that I've ever seen the caps to explode from excessive voltages where the output section is died it causes a flyback effect um, on the rails which which then causes the rail to increase way higher than they ever should have done so I need a 42 and a 56 <laughs> I don't work on many of these amplifiers, so I don't probably haven't got one of those. I probably haven't got enough of those. No, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go ahead and order some uh, some of those. So let's see. Let's see how much that's gonna cost. It shouldn't be much. That's that's even if they're even available nowadays. Uh, UK RX components. Let's have a look. Yes, A42 and A56. Although these these have a different prefix. These are KMPS. Uh, yes. So. So, the, uh, the the parts which will work for this um, are obviously A42 and A56, but there's a variety of different prefixes uh, that are before these. Um, so we need to find out which ones are currently available. So perhaps if I type in, um, uh, what can I, so, no it's not is it, um, let me just try typing an A42 transistor, see if, it, see if anything comes up on artist components here. So 
so nothing on that. Um, let's try typing in the original part for this, which is KMPS. Yep, KMPS. I don't think these are going to be available anymore because I think they're, yeah, these are pretty old school ones. Okay, no. So the KMPS A42 isn't available, but uh, by the looks of things, we have the perhaps modern equivalent, which is the MPSA. Let's see. And those are the ones which um, which Prince actually just rec just uh, just suggested in the live chat. MPSA. So yes, these are the ones which are going to work. So I can either order a bag of fifty. Oh man. Or a bag of 1,000. <laughs> great, great. So I guess we're buying 50 of those. Um, so the uh, the, the complementary um, PNP for that then would be uh, MPS, probably going to be MPSA um, 56. MPSA 56G. Do I want the G? What difference does that make? So it, it always redirects me to the G variant. Okay. So that's an eight. That's an 80 volt PNP. Um, the 42 is. Nah, I see the 42 is a 300 volt. Hmm. Is that is that right then? Let's let's search for the originals. Let, let's let's compare. Let's look at the data sheets for the originals. So it's K uh, KMPS A forty two, KMPS A forty two, and MPS A forty two. Maybe maybe it is right. Maybe it is right. What do you guys reckon? I'm slightly less experienced with this old fashioned style class D. So, the MPSA. Yeah, MPSA 42 is a 300 volt part. And the MPSA 56. Is an 80 volt part. Yeah, so the PNP is an 80 volt part, but the uh, NPN is a 300 volt part. Ah, uh, what the hell? You know, if it want, if they, if that's what's being used, then let's use those. Okay. So how many? Oh, I need to order 50 of these ones. Well, oh, what the hell? I need to order 50 of these as well. So what's this going to come to then? Can get rid of those now. These aren't even available. The 56s aren't even available. Ah, for goodness sake. MPSA. Okay, let's try a different website. MPSA 92 might work, but the, because these Class D boards are so fussy with the parts that they use, I really just want to go ahead and use the originals. I don't want any headaches from using different parts. Like, technically, right, I could replace these drivers, I could replace them for MJE uh, 340 and MJE 350. I could technically do that and it should work, but I've not had great luck and experience replacing those drivers with, um, with more modern parts it just doesn't seem to go well for me, so I'm, I'm thinking. Should, I'm thinking. Should I just replace these with the originals? Hmm. 
Like, if I'm going to change them for something else, then I might as well try the um, MJE. I might as well try the MJEs, because they should technically work. That's if I have any of the MJEs left. I used, I used a lot of them recently. That's a 340. I think I ran out of MJE 350s anyway. I do, I do have a donor board that I can nick some from. What do you guys reckon? MJE 340, 350? Should I try those or should I just go ahead and order some original parts? Well, the MJE should technically work, but these amps can be very fussy. Would it hurt the amp to try them? No, it would not hurt the amp to try them. I want to try and use something that I've already got laying around here because this amplifier has a, has, a, has a deadline of Wednesday. Okay, cool. What I'm going to do is I am starving because if you notice at the start of this live stream I said I was hungry and I have not eaten anything yet and it's been uh, two hours into the stream. So I am going to lock off the stream just now. Thank you very much guys for sticking with me and uh, for checking out this amplifier repair. Uh, we will get, we will find those square waves. We will find those square waves for sure. Uh, we just need some new drivers. I think that's what will sort this thing out. So um, what I'll do is in the next live stream with us with this amplifier, I will fit the uh, MJE 340 and 350s and see whether they make it happy. Uh, see if we find any square waves lurking around anywhere inside. Um, hopefully we do. If we don't, um, then you know e e even if it doesn't like the 340s and 350s, we should still see an attempt at switching. We should still see the thing try to work. Um, you know, if anything, if it doesn't like them, then they'll heat up. Um, so that's what I'll do. Uh, fit the 340s, 350s. If it works but it heats up, then I'll order some original replacement parts and hopefully they'll keep it cool. If we fit the 340s and 350s and we still don't get any signs of square waves anywhere at all, no switching attempts going on, then we need to see work out why it's not attempting to switch. Um, so that'll be another video, I think. MJE 340 and 350, Nicholas. So yeah, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, next week there'll be a lot more live streams for myself. Got uh, quite a few bits to work on. Um, I've had a busy weekend just now, so uh, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. And I'll probably see you tomorrow on the live stream where we tackle the drive circuit of this a little bit further. Have a great evening, and I'll see you soon.